Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Simon Britt from Geomega. How are you today? Good, thank you. Simon, the reason I wanted to talk to you here is I want to get your opinion on the overall uh, rare earth sector right now. You're one of the few that have managed to survive the 155 percent collapse in 2011 in the overall rare earth sector. So I want to start by asking you about the Siemens Molycore deal because we think it's a big deal. I think the key comment there was the uh, sustainability aspect of Molycore's development. Uh, and another uh, important factor is that uh, it's been about a year and a half into Molycorp's production stage. This is where Siemens decided to step in and sign the long-term agreement. So you can see two things here, uh, sustainable extraction and also reliability of the uh, production that uh, Molycorp has been uh, doing. I also think that Geomega has been ahead of the game in understanding the supply chain issues and industrial metal strategies for sustainability in North America. Can you talk to me a little bit about this? Yes, well, the, uh, the top part uh, was to remove the acid deliveries uh, out of the uh, equation. And for that, uh, we inserted a, a regeneration facility directly on site. Uh, and subsequently, uh, afterwards, uh, to address the supply chain, uh, governments are looking to, uh, for subsequent transformation, uh, local employment, uh, we didn't think that selling a critical metals uh, concentrate would do, would do the trick uh, to go into production. So about three and a half years ago, we addressed uh, that, uh, we started to address a solution with the developing a physical separation process. Uh, we showcased excellent results uh, early in 2014. And uh, as we move towards the scaling up of the process, we hope to showcase more excellent results. And for those of you in the audience that may not be familiar with this, right now Chinese, the Chinese control 95% of all of the processing of rare earths on the planet. So with regards to that, a lot of companies are currently looking to make uh, partners out of China, but doesn't that defeat the overall purpose? Oh, we think so. Uh, they control that it's a huge amount, uh, 90, 90 plus percent, with, uh, in, in, in our estimate, 20, uh, maybe 30 percent of the resources. Now, they do that with the uh, separation uh, process, uh, solvent extraction, which they master, uh, a chemical process. Uh, so it's very difficult to compete uh, with China, uh, out of China, with all the environmental controls, uh, more expensive chemicals, and know-how that they've developed and uh, they keep secret. The Tesla Power All battery announcement that was out this month, um, how do you see that affecting rare earths? Well, I see it as a successful story uh, in an industrial uh, mineral uh, sector. Um, how does it affect rare earths? Um, time will tell. We see rising prices, a big rising price trend between the increased tensions between China and Japan, China looking for imports, uh, you know, with everything that's happening globally, the German Resource Alliance that was recently announced where they've identified rare earths, and we've been talking to a lot of different countries about what they're planning on doing moving forward. Um, can you explain to our audience why these permanent uh, rare earth metals are so important? Well, it's, uh, it's the best technology for, uh, for magnetic material. So uh, in terms of weight and strength ratio, uh, neodymium magnets or permanent magnets uh, is, is the best. So uh, to go uh, to generate more power, uh, you're in the radioactive series, which, uh, which will never happen. Um, so, that's, uh, so you're talking neodymium and praseodymium and a touch of dysprolium. Now, of course, they've talked about a lot of replacements for these magnet metals. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think those, uh, those discussions happened when the price was too high. I think there's a limit to uh, any price you can, you can put on, on a particular metal. And uh, from our understanding, neodymium is maxed at about $80, $85 a kilo. Uh, and uh, for the rest, uh, uh, it depends on the quantities, uh, but so far uh, I think one, one maximum is neodymium at 80, 85. Of course, uh, I recently saw a presenter who said uh, that they could use alternatives, but then they would be announcing to the market that they had their second best product. So overall, where do you see the prices? Do you see them increasing this next year? Because we've heard rumors that we're going to see a price escalation, another dramatic price escalation between now and October. What are your thoughts on that? I hope it doesn't increase dramatically uh, because the last uh, dramatic increase uh, shied away uh, a lot of end users, which I think are slowly coming back uh, and enjoying the fact that, okay, it's, it's still a, sta uh, a potentially stable supply. 
uh, we see a reversal in the downtrend for the permitted magnet material. Uh, the top four, neodymium, praseodymium, dysprosium, and terbium. Uh, the rest, uh, so far, the, it's, it's still unclear uh, where they settle. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.